Namaste. Hi, everyone. Today's practice is going to be a blend of Hatha yoga, yin yoga, and pranayama. It'll be a short, condensed practice to set you up for meditation and or an embodied essence of clarity and connection. And so let's get started, okay? I'm going to have you begin lying out on your backs. And place your feet on the ground, hip width apart. Once you're settled here, take a deep breath in and let it out through the mouth. <sighs> Do check in with your feet. Make sure that they are hip width apart and parallel. And then lie your arms down by your sides. We're going to do some dynamic bridge pose. And this, this, all of these poses that we're about to do are really designed to help you sit more comfortably for the pranayama, the breath work. And so on your inhale, you'll start to lift the hips and take the arms up overhead. And then exhale back down. Inhale, lift the hips. The top of the arms and the hands touch the floor. On the exhale, lower the hips and the arms back down. And this movement is more or less in sync with one another. So as you begin the inhale, the hips lift, arms lift. Come all the way up to the top, the top of the inhale, the back of the hands touch the floor. And as you exhale, you'll lower back down. And we'll do that two to three more times on our own. Okay, and complete, finish. Take your feet wide, let your inner thighs touch. Deep breath in, and exhale out. <sighs> Wiggle the jaw, relax the eyes, and drop down into the belly. Drop your attention down into the belly. Okay, walk the feet back in toward one another, hip width apart. And take your arms wide. If you have any props like I do, just squish them or sorry, push them out of the way. <laughs> and we'll hug the knees in toward the chest. And just come through a dynamic Spinal rotation. Taking the knees over to the right to begin with. As you inhale, you'll lift the knees back up, keeping the legs stacked, and then drop them down to the left. Inhale back up. And exhale to the other side and just continue this at your own pace. We'll do about four rounds for each side. And so you might be coming into your third round for side A now.
Beautiful. Come back to center. Hug your knees in toward your chest with both arms and hands. And just roll around on your low back for a minute. Now lengthen the legs out long so that the feet are coming up toward the ceiling and take your arms overhead. I have this silly prop in the way, so I'm just going to move it right there. Okay, so now arms overhead, reach through the heels. And let the back of the hands touch the floor. Let the outer edges of the upper arms rotate down toward the ground as you tuck your shoulder blades underneath and then reach through the fingertips away from the hip creases and flex the toes toward you, toward your torso. Close your eyes, tuck the chin so that the back of the neck is long. If the floating ribs are arching up, just drop them down toward the floor, toward the back body, and breathe. Breathe in through the nose, filling up the whole torso. Exhale out through the mouth. Continue to flex the feet, reach through the heels. Reach through the heels, flex the feet, toes toward the torso. Lengthening through the back of the knees. Last breath in here. And exhale out. Hug your knees toward your chest. Roll around on your low back, very gently. And then lengthen your right arm, roll over to your right side, and you'll press yourself up to a seat. If you have your blanket nearby, I recommend getting that so that you can set yourself up in a comfortable seat. we're going to prepare for the pranayama. So asana, traditionally speaking, is a tool that prepares the body to sit more comfortably and to open the body up so that it can receive the breath more easily. Pranayama more or less translates as breath control. Prana is breath or spirit. Yama is restrain, restraint. And so we're learning how to control the breath in such a way that determines a certain outcome for the mind and for the body. And so the breath is intrinsically linked to the mind, meaning it's a little bit more difficult than asana learning how to control the breath. And that's why in the current approach toward yoga, we spend a lot more time on the asana than we do on the pranayama. But today, I'm going to take you through a practice that will hopefully help you cultivate clarity and connection. And in that space, you'll be able to move through your day, move through your week, with a sense of kind of reverence and connection to the present moment. And close your eyes, place both hands down on your knees. So check in here for just a moment. The three asanas that we did are designed to help you breathe. It's almost 
as if it's the minimal practice needed to set you up for breath work, for pranayama. It opens the chest, it opens the hips, and it opens the back. Notice the body breathing in this moment. Where is the breath most prevalent? Is it in the low belly? Is it in the chest? Does it lean more to the right side or more to the left side? Begin to lengthen your inhale in this seat. Before you do so, check in with the tailbone and the roof of the mouth. Can you align the roof of the mouth over the center point of the tailbone? Tuck the chin slightly and lengthen the back of the neck. It's as if the mid upper thoracic spine is reaching out from the back upward toward the head, lifting the whole spine toward the ceiling and the chest out of the belly. And now we'll begin to lengthen the inhale. Take a deep breath in. Exhale out through the mouth. And begin with your next inhale, counting to a four. One, two, three, four. Exhale out through the nose. Four, three, two, one. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, four, three, two, one. And continue with this on your own for the next minute. Notice if the breath moves more in the belly or more in the chest. Begin to direct it toward the belly so that it is the belly that is expanding with the inhale and contracting with the exhale. Cycle through one last round here. Four count in, four count out. And release. Release all control. Tuck the chin more down toward the chest. Lengthen the back of the neck out from between the shoulder blades. And just observe 
any sensations going on after that very short and simple breath. And now we'll add another technique to the process. We'll do alternate nostril breathing. And so for alternate nostril breathing, if you're not familiar or just as a friendly reminder, we will breathe in through one nostril and then exhale out through the other. Breathe in through that same nostril and exhale out through the opposite. And so I like to take my first finger and second finger of my dominant hand, place it in between the brow, just kind of as like an anchor for my mind. This is where my mind can center its attention. And then I'll use my pinky finger and my thumb to block the nostrils as I'm breathing. And so we'll go ahead and get set up in that way. First finger and second finger in between the brow. Take a deep breath in. Exhale out, <sighs> let it be audible if that feels good to you. And then block the right nostril, close your eyes, breathe in all the way as much as you can through the left. And then block the left and breathe out as much as you can, fully emptying yourself through the right nostril. Breathe in. And breathe out through the left nostril blocking the right. Breathe in through the left. When you're ready, breathe out through the right when you're ready. Breathe in through the right. and out through the left. And continue with this on your own. If you get a little confused, that's okay. The main principle is to breathe in through one nostril, breathe out the opposite, and continue with that sequence as best as you can. Keep going. You may notice that one nostril is more blocked than the other. That is entirely normal. As you do this, notice if there is a lot of force in your body with the breath, meaning are you forcefully inhaling? Are you forcefully exhaling? What would it look like to relax the body arms, the shoulders, the chest, the belly, the face. And allow the breath to move in and out with as much ease as possible, slow and steady and easeful.
And we'll do this for just another 60 seconds. You might notice the mind and the body starting to get a little irritated. The eyes might be moving more. There might be a tendency to kind of look outward. But keep the eyes closed, keep the attention inward. When that occurs, it means that you're starting to break through patterns in the central nervous system. Begin to make your way to your last exhale on your left side. As you complete that, lower your hand down and keep your eyes closed. Move your mental attention the very center of your brain, the midbrain. And allow that awareness to travel down through the throat, through the chest, along the spine, through the belly, along the spine, all the way to the very center point of your pelvic floor, the root. Rest your attention here. Bring your awareness back up to the spine, through the low back, the mid back, the upper back, into the neck, the back of the skull, the crown of the head, and then back down into the midbrain. Rest your awareness in the midbrain. Alternate nostril breathing stimulates two major channels of prana. These channels move from either hemisphere of the brain alongside and in between. They, they move almost like a wave, a 
within one another, alongside and in between the spine, all the way down to the hips. And so see if you can sense that movement. Kind of like a slithering sensation Weaving in and out from both hemispheres of the brain all the way down to the hips. Begin to take a deep breath in through the nose. A long breath out through the mouth. Staying in this place of reverence and connection. You can start to open your eyes. Welcome back. And I'll have you lie on your backs again. If you're sitting on a blanket, just move it out of the way. Once you lie on your backs, hug your knees into your chest. Mm -hmm. and we'll take our arms out wide, palms up. Keep the knees stacked and we'll lay the knees over to the right, coming into a longer held, more yin-like spinal rotation. Close your eyes and reconnect with that sense of movement from the left hemisphere of the brain all the way down to the right hip. Notice if you're holding the shoulders and the jaw and the eyes, the forehead, the hands, the hips, the belly. Remind all of these areas of your body to soften. And we'll slowly start to transition out, pass through center, and rotate our legs to the other side. And just let the legs stop where they naturally stop without forcing them to go into a certain shape. This is a more passive approach towards a spiral rotation. Remember to soften any area in the body that 
doesn't necessarily need to be hardened right now. It's tensing up out of default, not out of intention. And our role in this work is to retrain that area to exist in a state of softness, of relaxation. Maintaining centered and connected to our inner body. The channel of prana that moves from the right hemisphere of the brain all the way down to the left hip in a spiral like weaving in and out action. Begin to bring your body back to center. Hug your knees into your chest one last time. And then as you're ready, you can lengthen one leg down alongside the mat and then the other leg. Lay both arms down by your sides and we'll come into a resting Drop your awareness down into your tailbone and sacrum and pelvic floor, the whole root of your torso. Move that along the spine as if you're traveling up a thread that is about the width of your thumb all the way to the center of the brain the midbrain and then back down all the way to the very center of the chest Allow yourself to be completely absorbed by the center of your chest. And you can rest here for as long as you need. Coming into more clarity and connection for the rest of your day. The practice is complete. Namaste.